the knowledge about kundalini has been expressed in many sanskrit shastras since long and also in ayurveda it is described not only that but the books which are for curriculum talk about kundalini and the chakras because ayurveda is very very close to sahaja yoga even in the western medicine to begin with if you see the history they to to dealt with three doshas they dealt <coughs> with three problems that we have as in ayurveda the right side which has got pitta means bile left side which has got kaf means phlegm and the center part the problems of vayu means the gases now luckily <clears throat> so many western people have taken to sahaja yoga and have tried to bring down all the permutations and combinations to the simple reasoning of left right and center but <clears throat> the knowledge of sahaja yoga is absolutely basics even ayurveda is one step away from reality or we should say the fundamentals so you are dealing with the fundamentals of which a human being is built and if this knowledge was found out long time back in india should we not accept it the reason why people went into meditation in those days and found out all these deeper things within ourselves because they didn't have to fight the nature you have seen here nature how beautiful it is you can spend all your life under a tree while in the west even before getting out of the house you have to take at least 15 to 20 minutes to be prepared to go out It's quite a struggle. So the nature has been so kind, and that is the reason people took to meditation and found out all these deeper things within themselves. When they found it out, it was all written in Sanskrit language. I have such a big, thick book on this, which has. described all the shakti pithas and all the shri chakras brahma chakra lalita chakra and all that but this was just written down <coughs> but hardly any person got realization but in any other language like marathi or hindi which was spoken and written by common people nothing was done nobody knew about it only few people who read about it especially the shaivas they went into the research and they went into the work but very few people really got realization very very few then in the 12th century only the nath panthis who were experts of sanskrit who were following it rigidly that one master should have one disciple not more than that this was their tradition but in the 12th century gyanadeva gyaneshwara who was another nathpanthi his guru was his own brother he asked the permission from his brother that please allow me to say all these things openly 
least to say in marathi language because the common people don't know anything about this knowledge so he allowed him and he wrote the sixth chapter of ganeshwari in which he described kundalini but it was in the 12th century after that many saints described talked about it where we went yesterday to satara you know that's the place where shri ramadasa lived he said that kundalini they asked somebody asked how much time does it take to raise the kundalini he said that takshana means that moment but the person who wants to take it should be deserving and the one who wants to give should be capable it's a big condition this is such a big if capital if i tell you <laughs> as a result very very few people got their realization and those who were born as realized soul found found it impossible to talk to people ganeshwar as such a enlightened soul himself wrote one beautiful book called amrutanubhav which i will try to translate which is very joy giving to me at least it's very great joy giving he went so deep into the understanding of this joy i wish english language would provide me that subtlety to translate that book today i was thinking we should do the puja of shri chakra and lalita chakra which we have never done this is the right place to do these two chakras today lot has been written about shri chakra and about lalita chakra but to understand fundamentally the left side when it reaches up to vishuddhi then it uses on the right side the shri chakra on the left side the lalita chakra to manifest itself these two chakras are the ones who manifest all that you see but these chakras are the ones who emit vibrations of different kinds and because of their angularities like if you have some sort of a cardboard attached with small small holes of different colors and which rotates all the time you get different colors also you can get different permutations and combinations in the same way different permutations and combinations are created and that is how you get all the advantages of sahaja yoga so these two chakras are very important i do not know if you know of any mantras about shri chakra but i'll give you a book later on i'll translate it to you and you can compose something for shri chakra shri chakra on the right side lalita chakra on the left side so what we are really worshiping today is maha saraswati power and maha kali power both put together so now we started combining things not individual now these two energies are very important without the energy without the power nothing exists for example if this light had no power to give light or to burn it is useless in the same way without getting your realization you are useless because your power is not awake at least not complete but these two powers give us lots of benefits even without realization 
whatever you see in this world created is done by these two chakras of the adi shakti but here the power doesn't move it's not moving but in the human being the power start moving when it starts moving then we can say it is creating another world but movement is not the only thing this power acts gives you intelligence gives you all kinds of things which you have as human beings but later on this power itself becomes enlightened the dream means the left and right side both become enlightened this enlightenment you get it when you get your self realization but not immediately not immediately this one should understand for example if you have pain or if your chakra is catchy you have to use your hands you cannot say that the energy is flowing within me so it's all right i can manage it's not like that you have to use your hands to impart that power to yourself or to others if you have pain in the stomach then you can say that if there's energy in my stomach why should i have pain in the stomach but the play of these chakras have to come and that is why you have to use your power of your hands if you cannot use your hands then you cannot impart this energy many people have asked me that mother when will it move horizontal it will move horizontal no doubt it does but even that horizontal movement is to be guided by these two very important chakras so you must understand the importance of these two chakras within yourself that's why i have told many a times don't move your head too many times and this way many people talk i mean it's style of talking no there is that very common with french special that's another way you are not respecting your chakras shouldn't move your shoulders too much mostly they talk like this is anti chakras anti chakras should keep your shoulder straight when you are singing you can move your whole upper part is all right but not your shoulders this is the thing one has to understand that these two centers are to be looked after you can move your neck your body when you are singing is important that helps but not your shoulders shoulders are to be kept intact but while saying just yes you need not go on yes 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 it's very very simple thing but it can have a very bad effect and those who move their shoulders too much do not feel vibrations much because the chakras are not all right it's a very simple thing to be understood that they are the most important chakras we have and whatever is to be used out of this parama chaitanya they have to be used by these two centers even supposing your some chakra is catching on your spinal cord you have to use your hands somebody can say i can just put my attention then work out that good because yet your attention has not that 
reach that stage where these chakras, like Lalita chakra and Sri chakra, obey your attention. They do not. So you have to work out with your hands. Be careful. Don't move your shoulders too much. And if you see now Indians when they sing bhajans, they'll move the whole body. They'll do like this. But never their shoulders. The shoulders will move in the same way as the neck is moving. They might move their neck also, but they'll never move their shoulders like this. And it's regarded as inauspicious according to Indian standards. Because of this culture, based on what the saints have told and also about many seers have told, it is more related to spiritual life than to materialistic life. Now the materialistic life, unless and until there is the foundation of the spiritual life, takes you to a very partial development, you can say. But to get a full development, you must have your foundation on spirituality. That's why spirituality being the foundation has to be deep, has to be fully equipped, has to be absolutely perfect. Then the whole building can be built. It's gone wrong in the West, doesn't matter. Now you can build it up. And then you'll be surprised how you become really solid people. This is a very short talk about Sri Chakra. I think I should sit down and write all about it and it will be a nice handy thing for you to read. But you must know that beyond thought when you go, these chakras become extremely efficient because the thought puts a pressure on them. And because of the pressure, the movement of these chakras is very slow and ineffective. But once you can get out of your thoughts and go into thoughtless awareness, then these chakras start working it out and you start moving much deeper into your own being.